What's up guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to do carbon fiber overlays and also just some things that I learned throughout the process. I have a few pieces of my car that I've taken off. This goes around the shifter, these are the door trim, and this goes on the e-brake and I also have the battery cover and fuse box because I want them to look like carbon fiber and I don't really like the idea of wrapping them because I know it's not real carbon fiber so that just kind of bothers me i don't know if it doesn't bother you just wrap it it'd be a lot easier but i decided i want to learn to do my own carbon fiber overlays just co just because it's a fun project so the first thing you want to do is make sure that all of your pieces are black because as you can see here the weave kind of separates in some places we'll straighten it out before we put it on but you just want to make sure it's black just so nothing shows through so i'm just going to scuff these up with some sandpaper and paint them black and then i'll show you what the next step is the next thing you want to do is spread out your carbon fiber weave like this. And also I had to sand down some words that were on this to flatten it out. But after you put the adhesive on, you're not going to be able to see the sand marks or anything. So it doesn't need to be perfect. But now you just need to lay your stuff out where you want it. Like I'm not going to be covering this part just because it'd be hard. So I'm going to stop the carbon fiber right about there. So you just set it down. And then you want to make sure you have enough to go and wrap around the edges. And then you make like a square with it with the tape because we'll be cutting it on the tape because the tape will keep the weave from falling apart. So I'll show you what I mean right now when I actually do it. So here's what it looks like after the tape is put down. You can see it's outlining each piece and I give myself enough room to work with and wrap around the edge if I need to. But what I'm going to do is cut down the middle of the tape. So the tape will keep the weave together on the pieces I'm not using and on the pieces I am using. So I'm going to go ahead and cut all of these pieces out and then I'll show you how to attach it to the pieces that you will be overlaying. So here's what they look like all cut out. And now it is time to actually put the overlay on to the piece that we're using. So I'm going to start with my e-brake handle piece and I just take this small piece here. And you'll need some sort of spray adhesive. This is just some stuff I already had. It'd probably be better to find something that has that's a little bit stickier, but this is good enough just to hold it on. And once you put the resin on, it'll pretty much hold it on by itself. So I'm just going to give it a, a little bit spray of this, and then you have to let it sit for a little bit to get tacky, and then you'll put it on there. And I don't have time to do the resin tonight today, so I'm just going to let all of these dry overnight which won't hurt, and then I will do the resin tomorrow. So here's what one of them looks like right now. You can see I just have the double, uh, the adhesive stuff spread on there, and it's stuck around the edges. And I'm just going to let these dry overnight. And here is the battery cover. As you can see, the weave isn't perfect, but it'll be good enough just to be in the engine bay to kind of make it look a little bit nicer, but I'm not going to cut off the edges until the first two layers of epoxy are on there and have dried because it'll hold the weave in place and then I'll go around with scissors and cut it off and then use a blade and clean it all up. And then we will sand that whole layer smooth and then that's when we'll put on the last third layer. And then I haven't decided if I'm gonna do a fourth layer or if I'm just gonna sand the third layer smooth and then put a 2k hard clear coat on it and then just polish that so i haven't really decided yet but i'll decide what i want to do when that time comes but i have all of these covered i have one right here with the adhesive sprayed on it and i'm just letting it sit for a little bit so it can get tacky and then that's when i will lay this on and wrap that around but that's how it is for now so i'm going to let these dry and then i'll get back to you when i'm mixing the epoxy uh, the resin to put on the first layer so now it is time to mix the resin for the parts. Since I'm doing three layers, I marked my bottles by thirds so I know how much I can use in each of them since I have quite a bit of parts I'm covering. I don't know if this is going to be enough resin, but to get an exact mixing ratio, which these mix one to one, so I'm just going to measure it out to however much this weighs, this first third, however much that weighs, then I'll zero this and then I'll put in the exact same weight of the hardener and then we're going to stir it and then use these foam brushes to apply it. 
But before we do that, I'm gonna go ahead and trim these up a little bit more since the adhesive has dried. So there's not as much of this extra stuff on the side. So then I can kind of wrap it around easier and then we'll get started with the resin. So now it is time to mix the resin and the hardener. So I'm going to put in the resin first into this cup. So I will turn on the scale. And it's at zero, so I'm just going to pour until it reaches this line right here. And then I will take the measurement and then mix in the same weight of the hardener. So now you are supposed to stir it for three to five minutes. So I'm going to do that until you can't see anything left. And then I'm going to put it in some hot water that I microwaved and it'll help get all these bubbles out. And then we'll start layering it onto the parts. So this is about as many air bubbles as I could get popped now. I'm just going to use a hair dryer with a piece of screen taped over it like that so it doesn't blow as hard. And I'm just going to use that on the actual parts to get the air bubbles out. But now I'm going to start coating the parts. So I just hold it by a little clip in here and get a little bit of resin and start coating it. And I realize that I have way too much resin, I think. I probably could have done four coats, so. So this stuff is self-leveling, so it should level itself out after being applied. So I'm just kind of dabbing it on there, making sure to get it around all of the edges so that everything has a coat on it. So something really weird just happened. First of all, the camera wasn't recording. I just coated this part, which I need to go lay over here. I coated this part and I coated this one right here. And I realized the resin was getting a little sticky. Then all of a sudden, this cup just shrank like that. And the resin is hard as rock now. So I honestly have no idea what happened, but for some reason, all of this resin is just completely ruined. I don't know how this happened. I'm gonna mix just a little bit and I'm gonna mix enough resin for just one part now at a time, just do each part at its own time, just because I don't really know why I did that, but I'm gonna try to prevent that from happening again. So I'm just going to go ahead and mix up a little bit more resin in a one-to-one -one ratio like the instructions say. And then I'll probably try it on this big piece right here. So here are the pieces set out on the first coat of drying. You can see some of them look like this one where I didn't put as thick of a layer on. But I'm just going to go ahead and let that dry before I add this second layer. That piece looks pretty good. This one, I put a, you can see there's like some thick parts in there. Then this one is turning out really good. As you can see, there's still like bubbles and bumps and stuff, but that'll get wet sanded out. But this one looks really good because I poured some of the resin onto it instead of just brushing it on. So I think I'm going to do that for all of the parts now and kind of brush it out. And I'll let this dry for probably around like seven or eight hours, probably just as late as I can tonight. And then I'm going to put a, another layer on and I'm going to put this second layer on. It's going to be pretty thick. So then I'm going to let it dry for probably about two days. And then I'll come back and we will sand them all down to where they are mostly smooth. 
and then we'll put one last thick layer on because I think that's about all of the resin I'll have is enough for one more really thick layer. I'm not completely sure, but I'm just going to do as many layers as I can to get it as smooth as possible because it will look the best. But so far, this battery cover is kind of, I can kind of get an idea of what it's going to look like. And it's actually starting to look really nice other than kind of like the edges around here. But you don't see that because that's kind of covered. So I might just put like some black wrap right there just to cover these like parts that's coming off. But so far, after the little mishap at the beginning where that resin just got really hot and hardened, I still don't really know why that happened because it didn't happen once after that. So I'm just mixing it for like one cup for each little part instead of mixing it all at once. It's turning a lot, turning out a lot better. So I'll come back to you whenever I have, whenever I'm ready for the second coat. So now it is time for the second coat. These have dried for about seven hours and you can see it's not completely smooth and it's kind of the resin is kind of sticky just to the touch. That's when you want to put on the second layer. And the, th the second layer should be very thick. So I'm going to apply a really thick layer on all of this stuff to make sure that it can kind of self level as it dries. And then in 24 hours, we will be able to sand it down smooth and then put however many layers we need to put on then. So I'm going to go ahead and mix some more resin and then put on the second layer. So it has been 24 hours and all of the parts have cured. So now it is time to sand them. But before I sand them smooth, I'm going to cut off the edges. As you can see, I've already started on this part. You can see that edge right there is flush with the plastic because I first cut it with scissors. So like long pieces like this, I would cut off with scissors and then I'll take a blade and then cut it off with the blade right up next to it. And I'm going to do this so once when I sand, I can sand down the edges to make them smooth again. And then we can, whenever we sand the resin and put on another coat of resin, it'll kind of wrap around the edges and smoothen it all out. You know, parts like this, you can see there's some resin here and it didn't really bond. So I'm just going to sand this smooth and then tape off all of the part with the resin and carbon and just paint this probably with gloss black or clear just to make it shiny and blend in more with the carbon but you can see this piece is already pretty much perfect it's really shiny it's just a little bit wavy but that'll be a simple fix just with a little bit of sanding and the pieces are really hard and strong now and you can see on the edges there's some uh waviness because of the dripping resin but i just took some wire cutters and cut off all of the drips of the resin and that should be able to be smoothed out. But then with this piece here, you can see it's a little bit messed up. That is because it started to peel up and I caught it just before I went to bed to let them dry. And you can see right there is a little gap, but it didn't, I had to super glue it and clip it down with some clothespins. And I'm pretty sure this piece got ruined so I'm probably going to have to pull this carbon off and restart on this one if I can't salvage it by sanding. But it still didn't even bond completely. So I think this piece is pretty much ruined. But I'm going to go ahead and cut it and sand it just to see if I can fix it. But if not, I should be able to pull this off. If not, I'll just buy another part and start it again. But all of the other parts are looking good. This one still... This one I will just sand just a little bit. I'll cut it and then sand it just so the resin will stick because you can see it's still bumpy from the carbon fiber. This piece is almost perfect. I can see it's kind of stuck. I have it on these plastic lids though because the resin pops off of the plastic really easily. But this piece is pretty much perfect. It's so small. I'm, all I really have to do is sand out the air bubbles and cut it smooth because like it's so small you can't even tell it's wavy. But this piece is almost perfect, so they are turning out a little bit better than I was thinking after the resin hardened up that first time. I was like, this is just a failed project, but it seems to be working. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the edges off, and then I'll get back to you when I sand them, which I probably will not do tonight. I'll probably let them dry at least like another day because I have coilovers I'm putting on tomorrow. And I want to let these dry 
make sure they're completely dry because the instructions say it cures completely in three days and the worst thing that you could have is sanding it while it's still just a little bit sticky because then you're going to get dust stuck in the resin and then that won't come out and when you put on the sec the third layer of resin it'll completely ruin it so make sure that they're completely dry and i'll get back to you whenever i start sanding mine so all the parts are sanded and here is the battery box you can see it almost looks like um dry carbon just by the sanding so even if you like this look you could just use like one like 2000 grit sandpaper to get out any of the scratches and that could actually look pretty cool but i want mine to be glossy so i'm going to mix um another cup of resin to finish all the parts there's the rest of them down there and i'm just going to layer it on about as thick as i can so that it can self level and hopefully i won't have to sand and polish this because i don't really want to sand and polish it so i'm probably just going to leave it however this third coat turns out so let's get started so everything has a layer of resin on it and it is ready to dry they almost even look perfect now but i've already seen just a little bit of like dust specks and stuff in them so i think whenever this dries tomorrow or probably i'm gonna wait two days for this stuff to dry because i'm doing coilovers tomorrow like the second half of them you'll probably see that video somewhere on my channel around this time and i'm going to sand these with 1500 grit sandpaper and then just polish them and that should get them just about perfect and if the resin is too hard to be polished just for the cheap polisher i have i don't really know how if that's going to work or not i might just spray some clear coat on them and then i know that can be polished but i'll get back to you whenever these are dry but you can see they almost look perfect now there's a little divot right in there but most of it should self-level this piece is almost perfect but I should, I'll get back to you whenever these are dry and we'll just kind of see what needs to be done from there. So the third and final layer of resin has dried and now I am starting to wet sand all of the pieces. This one I've started wet sanding. You can see there's a few low spots that I'll have to just sand just a little bit there. And this piece, as well as the fuse box cover, got a bug in them right there. So I'm just going to have to wet sand that out. And then you can see as I turn it in the light, there is a few dust specks. That like stuff that looks like hair. That's from these things that have been blowing around in the air that will just wipe right off. But the wet sanding should get out most of the dust. And then I will polish it. And they will be nice and shiny. And I'm going to put them in the car. I already put the trim that goes around the shifter boot in the car because it didn't have any dust specks in it. It was already perfect. And it's storming right now. So in the next few days, whenever it's a nice day, I will show you what they all look like in the car. So I don't remember where I last left off on this video, but this is a few months later. I actually finally got around to polishing and sanding and clear coating the carbon fiber parts in the engine bay. And you can see they are done. The interior parts are also done. I even put the badge back on this one just because there's a little tiny bubble there. So I just ended up covering it up. But it actually turned out really nice. All of these pieces on the inside are perfect. And overall, I think it was worth it. It was a fun project. And it only cost me $30 to do the parts in the engine bay. And these parts, when it would probably... The two parts in the engine bay to be bought from a company would be about... $200 and I don't even think a company makes these inside parts so I definitely saved a lot of money and it turned out really nice I think they look really nice with the carbon fiber shift knob but that's pretty much it please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video